In this video, we'll examine how to make selections based on an element's position within the web page. You'll need to open up exercise underscore 4.html, which is inside the chapter 5 using selectors directory. I've opened the finished file in the web browser, and you can see that it's similar to the starter file in the sense that it has some paragraphs describing how to select an element by position, followed by this table that also indicates the different selectors and some examples of uh, using those selectors. So we've used the asterisk before, and that selects any element. We've also selected an element by its name by simply passing the name of the element as the selector. We've passed a few selectors in by way of their relationship to having parents or being a child of a particular tag. In this case, anchor tags that are children of P tags, and here TD tags that are children of TR tags. We've also seen specific selectors including the greater than sign that indicates that in this case the TD has to be a direct child of the TR tag. Whereas here, any A tag, regardless of its position below the P tag, is selected. So one or more levels below the P does not have to be a direct child. That's indicated by a simple space bar between the two elements, as opposed to the greater than sign, which reflects a direct relationship, parent to first child. So the chart continues with some more sophisticated selectors and some examples, some of which we've already used. In this exercise, however, we're going to select the element based on its position to surrounding elements. So in this example, I've got a series of buttons down at the bottom. You can see that I can select an immediate child of the P tag. So here we'll take a closer look at that when we perform this exercise and see why this is selected. This one selects the first row in the table. This selects the last row in the table. So here again, we're just selecting these TR tags based on their position. Select odd rows, select even rows, and I think I'll go ahead and refresh the page right now so I can show you that we can select only child of the first paragraph. That takes us back here, just like the first button did for the immediate child of a paragraph tag. And our last button will be to create a selector that selects the fifth row in the table. I'm back in the source code now, and we're looking at our first function in the script block, where we want to write a selector that selects an EM element that's the first child of a P element. So you may recall from the finish file where that appeared, but we'll look at it now in the document. So here's our opening body tag, followed by the main header, and a paragraph. Inside that paragraph, you'll see our first instance of an EM tag surrounding the words, for example. So we want a selector that will go ahead and select that EM element uh, because it's the first child of a P element. So once again, the majority of the code's been created for you. We just need to come up with the proper selector. So let's highlight the add selector comment and replace it with the tag that we're looking for. So we are looking for a, a P tag, but that's not the, the really the ultimate tag we're looking for. We're, of course, looking for an EM element. But since this lesson is about finding a tag based on its position within the document, we're going to reference that P element because our EM needs to be a child of that PM. Not only that, it needs to be the first child of that. So normally we might just say, give us uh, an M tag whose parent is a P, but because we need to be specific, we're going to choose first in front of that. So we want the first instance of the P tag. And then we want a direct child, and we've seen that in the chart earlier being accessed by way of the greater than symbol. So our selector looks like that. We want the first P tag in the document whose child element is an EM tag. So let's go ahead and save this and run it in the browser and see what we get. So I'm going to scroll down to that first button, select immediate child of P, and we get, for example. So let's return to the source code and we'll move on to our next selector. This selector will be somewhat similar to the first one. We want to find the first row in the table. So I'm going to highlight that add selector placeholder text and replace it with what we're looking for. Now a table row is a TR tag, so we're definitely looking for a TR tag. But here again, we're going to use that first child to get the very first TR tag in the document. So your selector should look like that. And then you can go ahead and save and test this as well. And we'll select 
the first row button. And the first row, of course, is the header row. So the TH or the TD that makes table headers or, or table columns uh, it really doesn't play a role here because we're not looking for TDs or THs. We're looking for TR tags. Let's return to the source code and move on to the next selector. The next selector we write is intended to select the last row in the table. So you might be able to guess this one based on our previous syntax. Again, looking for a TR tag, but this time it is the last child. So your selector now looks like that. Notice the first child, the last child, all separated or prefixed, I should say, by a colon. So the name of the tag we're looking for, colon, uh, the filter, in this case, last child or first child. So let's save this and test it. Select the last row as the button you want to click, and there's our last row selected. So you're going to start to see a pattern here as we go on to the next selector, which selects the odd rows of the table. You can see that these selectors make it very easy for us to locate parts of the document. TR tag is what we want, and we've got this filter called odd. So now it's colon odd. We'll save that, test it, and I will click on the button that says select the odd rows, and there we go. One thing to bear in mind when you use the odd is the zero-based counting that JavaScript uses. So you might think row 2 uh, being an even number. And following that logic, that would be row 3 and 4. So it, it would appear that we are highlighting or selecting the even rows. But remember, because of zero-based counting, this first row is 0, the second row is 1, 2, and 3. So we are definitely highlighting the odd rows here if you use zero-based counting. Back inside of our source code, you'll see that we're going to use a very similar function here to get the even rows. So we'll highlight, once again, the add selector placeholder text and type in the name of the tag that we're trying to select, which is TRs again, but this time TR tags whose index number is an even number. So we'll save and test this. And we have a button called select even rows. And it's interesting to note that the index number here is zero, but it does get selected with even. And of course, that's one, two, three, four, and you can see two and four clearly highlighted. But the interesting notation here is that the zero index is highlighted as well. Back in our source code, we're going to make a very similar selection to our first one in that we want to select an M element that's a child of P but it has to be the only child of P. So that's the distinction here that we're making from the first time we selected this emphasis tag or EM tag that was a child of a P tag. So we'll highlight our placeholder text and we'll place the context, so to speak, in other words, the parent tag P and the child tag M. But we've learned previously that this would select all M tags one or more levels below P, and we need to get a lot more specific than that. So the M tag needs a stipulation that it be the only child of its parent, and that's that P tag parent. So let's save this and test it. And that button is select the only child of the first paragraph. So we'll go ahead and select that. And if you scroll up, you can see that there's only one EM tag in this paragraph. Now there's an EM tag in this paragraph. You can tell it's italicized. But there's another one over here. So this one, neither of these really are the only child called EM of the parent tag paragraph. So this is the only one that gets highlighted in this case. Back in our source code, the last selector that we want to create is one that selects the fifth row in the table. So we'll highlight our placeholder text. And once again, the tag we're trying to select here is a TR tag. And we're going to use a technique called the nth child. So it is the nth child to which you pass the index number of that child. So we want the fifth row. So we're going to go ahead and place five in there. And let's see what we get. We'll save this, test it in the browser. That's the last button here that says select the fifth row. Now you may have already noticed that this worked, but you may not have expected it to work based on our zero-based counting discussion that we had earlier. 
but you can see that this is row 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So when we use this method, it actually retrieves the number based on normal ordinal counting of 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. So I encourage you to examine the chart here in more detail and use some of the other selectors that we may not have used at this point to experiment with how these selectors work based on the element that you're looking for and its location within not only the entire document but within its surrounding elements.